It was weird because I found that I couldn't write in the chaos of Boogie Nights coming out. I mean, I just couldn't. I think I just wanted to make another movie right away because I was scared about expectations. And I thought I could cut them off at the pass if I just went right away and made another one. And as it started to die out, I started to write. So anyway, I wrote for eight months. Like, um, and, and the reality is that the majority of the writing really happened in the last two weeks. I went to Bill Macy's cabin in Vermont for a week, which is the middle of fucking nowhere. And that was really fantastic. And there was a snake outside the cabin. So, and this is true, I was really scared to leave. I was really scared to leave. So it really kept me in the cabin for one week. And I wrote, <laughs> I just wrote. And I mean, it was really like ironing. Richard Legravenez has always described sort of writing as like, if you're ironing a shirt, you go a little bit and then you go a little bit more you know over the same section again but down a little bit more and then down a little bit more and that's kind of what it was like and in those two weeks it was just like Shoo. if if I'm, I'm probably more um i'm more nervous about directing directing this movie than uh, than sydney or Bo or uh, boogie nights because i can just feel the sort of just little precarious balancing of scenes and how long they are, and and I'm 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 not articulating this very well, but I'm but I'm I'm very nervous as a director on this movie, really. The focus that this movie has on like these older guys, you know, the Peter Finch character and the William Holden character, and maybe sort of templates for me and um, for sort of Earl Jimmy kind of guys, you know, these sort of old classic kind of TV guys and kind of losing a grip on their their shit. You know, and what's going on with them. And that's a kind of a, a great thing to hang on to. And then, of course, photographically, there's just a ton to steal. Owen Roy's movie. Owen Roy's. Um, in terms of um, sort of cold stuff. I, cold stuff sort of playing with warm, cold stuff playing with warm again. And um, on and on and on and on. And this is, and just script-wise, this is probably the best movie we're going to have. Patty Chayefsky. This is probably top five best screenplays ever, probably. Um, so, uh, nominated in one, I think Peter Finch um, won, definitely won, and I want to say, I want to say that Peter Finch won too. Oh, I, I said that, I said that already, but I want, and Petty Chayefsky won. I, I, no, I want to say that Faye Dunaway won, actually. I think this is actually one of her, um, one of her best performances too, and, and obviously Robert Duvall. Too, so, but everybody's everybody's in this movie. But really, think about Jimmy and Earl too a lot when you see this movie. And that's um. Anyway, there's more to say, but um, let's just watch. So, because there's so many stories in, in, in Magnolia. You know, it, it, it six, has to be the six same. Stories. It has to be the same. Mm -hmm. So you want them to all feel the same all the way through. From one Absolutely. Day. So there's a kind of, huh? So it's one that's story. So you're not watching like. Peace, peace, peace. It's, it all has to be one connection. It's one, you're watching one story and you feel like if one piece was missing... Do you know what I mean? I was trying to figure out how many stories there really were, and I guess it's nine main characters. Yeah, nine I heard you say. That was fucking DeLuca who said six stories. And I was like, I'm trying to make one story, you know? So... Did you just settle for a rewrite or anything? That wasn't... No. It's gonna... No. You know why? Final Cut. <laughs> it's a scary thing to give to a guy like me. Um, all right, ordinary people on Wednesday. Okay. And action! Action car! Keep going. 
Keep going, keep going. Good. Cut. Ah, right, let's keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Again, again, and I'll say it up because everyone hasn't always heard this. When the frogs start, there's no rain. There's absolutely no rain. Only wet down. It, yeah, it's <clears throat> rain, rain stop, frogs start, frogs end. There's no... I like that. Five X points. Wait, give me a date. It would just be Paul. Yeah. We were talking about that you were saying in Earl's house is you wanted maybe the clip of the game show. Yeah. Um, um, let me if see. we could do it. What um, I'm saying is by this date we're in Earl's house. It's going to be raw wood. Yeah. I wish I could shoot the game show first. And right now I'll shoot the game show third. Because what I'll do is I'll do Frank's section because i got to get Tom out. And I also have to get Julianne out because she's going to go to London to do a movie. But it works well and it would have happened anyway because Frank's story blends into Earl's story, which of course blends into the Earl Phil story, which blends, blends into Linda. So I'll be able to keep that completely in order. Frank's stuff will be all in order. It'll lead us into Earl's house where I'll do, where Earl and Phil will start with their last three scenes, but they're very sort of calm and silent, so, so, it's, so I think it's okay for them. And then I'll backtrack and start the Earl Linda stuff and go to Earl's house in order and take us up to Linda's, do three days of Linda's meltdown. So I'll be doing the characters uh, kind of out of order in terms of who sort of comes into the movie first and this kind of thing. But once I'm in their stories, I'll be doing them in order. Flies in on cue. Yeah. So the question is, so what do we see first? How does it, how is it first presented to us? How the fuck do I start do, doing this? What are we doing? Okay, so um, um, I'm going to watch my language from now on, kids, okay? <laughs> I'm going to try and stop. How are you doing? I'm free. Good to see you. How are you doing? Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I've been lazy, or I haven't been lazy, but I've been uh, going nuts. And what I, what I have to do, I have still yet to do, is write the game show in its entirety. I promise, I promise by uh, Tuesday I will have it done. Because what we're going to do when we do this game show is we're going to rehearse it top to bottom, right? The whole thing, top to bottom. And we're actually going to shoot a live video game show. Do you know what I mean? Not the movie camera. Do you know what I mean? But like what the real What Do Kids Know program would be seeing. So we do a whole day rehearsals with our lighting cues and the What Do Kids Know stuff and your, your panel turns. And it's like the kids, da 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 The adults, da 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 And um, we're going to just rehearse it and then shoot it on videotape, right? Once we get that done, then we start doing the movie sections of it. The real 35 millimeter stuff, where it's like, okay, there's all these close-ups over here of Stanley, Richard, and Julia, and there's the stuff of the adult and, and Jimmy stuff, right? So that's kind of how we're going to do it. But to do that, I need to write the game show as a whole. <coughs> Kids in the lead, and they get a chance to pull further and further ahead with the following secret bonus musical question. I will read you a line from an opera, and you are to tell me the you you and you and you are to and you are to give me the same line from in the opera from which in the in the same language in which the opera was originally written. Uh, and for a bonus twenty-five, you can sing it if you want to. Here's the line: Love is a rebellious bird that nobody can tame, and it's all in vain to call it if it chooses to refuse. Well, that was uh, in French, and that. Was in the opera Carmen. And that goes, um, L'amour est un vaso rebelle que nous ne pouvons apprivoiser. Et c'est vrai, on va qu'on la fella, celui qu'on vient de refuser. Woohoo! Unbelievable! 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 Gino, just so we're clear here, Grip Electric, Friday, go downtown to park until Tuesday, correct? Everything does or must 
everything is moving on Friday night, other than probably wardrobe. It's all to do with we're not having drivers working on Monday because we basically all the crew, and this is if you put if you work it and you don't ask me, I'm not fucking paying it. Are not working on Monday. The reason being is we're shooting Saturday, which is the fifth day, and we're also shooting a sixth day. And I don't want to get into something where you're coming to me saying it's the seventh day. So it's crucial that next Monday everyone's off unless it truly is approved by me. We know about you, obviously, from a rigging point of view. Um, Let's make a movie. No, I mean, is, it, is there anything else? That, I mean, is there other questions? Because this is obviously the last meeting we're going to have before. This is about the... Yes. I hate pre-production. I fucking hate it. I will be a calmer, wonderful, gentle, beautiful person come <laughs> fucking Thursday. Come Tuesday. It's like, I'm off and away. I'm off and away. Just get me in the fucking boat, you know. There's enough talk of building the boat. The boat thing is going to be fine. We just have to do it now. Okay, locked up. Quiet, please. So uh, this is the first shot of this movie that um, I think we should all unashamedly try and make a great movie. And don't apologize. Let's just try and make a really, really, really fantastic movie. Because there's no shame in that. Okay? <laughs> okay. Um, great. So we'll just do this. Ready? Okay. Everybody's going on action, right, Adam? This is 165. 165. Here we go, standing by and rolling. Ready and action. First he was saying that he'd, he'd written, he was going to do something really fast. He wanted to get a group of friends together and he was going to write something and we were just going to knock it off, like do it really, really fast and just, you know, a bunch of people and people in the valley and it was just going to go, you know, bang, bang, bang. And then he was, he was, then he was writing it and writing it and he said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get the script, you know, the script here and then, and then it was, then, yeah, it was, it was, it was a while, you know, it was a, a lot later than I think he thought. It wasn't just like a knockoff kind of piece, it was a big piece. I thought it was incredibly brave that it, because one of the things that's, that I think is so um, uh, so great about Paul and, and so wonderful about him is his is his humanity and how emotional he is. There aren't there aren't many people who have the um, have the desire or the, or um, or the, or the I don't know bravery you need to be that emotional you know Paul does you know, Paul does that I mean he really goes there and it also was a clearly very personal film you know I mean it really had you know was dealing with issues about death and cancer and things that you know all those things that he'd been going through people you know it's, that's that's what I thought was so was such a standout about the movie that it was that it was grand and you know hugely emotional but but really personal Look at all these frogs, Julie. I, I know, I know. I was just thinking about that. Man, you got a lot. You got a lot of stuff to do with the frogs, huh? Yes, I really so do. So how does it work? At the end of, do you, do you end up doing like at the end of everybody's piece? Do you do like a little frog piece kind of? Is that how it ends up working the schedule? I, mean, I think like it's do actually kind of. Part, I think it's kind part. of messy sometimes. I think so, it's, you go from acting one day to frogs the next day to acting again. Doing, uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty messy all around. There's a bunch of shots yeah, yeah. which no, have never really ever been addressed in terms of 
drugs. I get, that's all I care about. They would do them all. Because ILM wants to do all of them. Wait, exactly. all of what? All the, all the ground dressing. Ground, all the dressing. Yeah. When did that happen? No, that, that was... That's that, wait. recent Joe Letary's thoughts on it. Wait, what happened to you dress in small select areas? <laughs> right. Or, I, I want Dylan to tell me the thing. All right, well, you this, tell me the thing. Nobody else... Please, no one else... Just one thing. No, d d just so no one's... Everyone, not everyone's talking at me. Just, if you know what this new thing is, tell me. I do know. And tell me. And this is okay. part of coming here today. There, there are two or three separate discussions. One is Joe Letary and everybody up there has sort of reevaluated. He said, if at all there are moving frogs... It is best for him to do everything on the ground. The things that they would like us to do, Steve Johnson, XFX wise, is anything that, that is uh, on a car or something moving within the frame because that's expensive and hard to track. Okay. So we will dress in Steve Johnson frogs on cars okay. that move. Okay. Right? Stop me when I'm Joe's wrong. here. There's right. Joe. Just keep stop him when okay. you're wrong. So, that's subject number one. Subject number two is this whole thing of how to get the budget down. That's one thing. Subject number three is all these shots of the next morning, the aftermath, dressing in. It is a day look. It's a whole different thing than we've done up to this point. Looking at the script. Okay, we just wait a second. Right? So that, that's subject number three that, that has to also be discussed about who, who does what. And, and I, I, there are three options. Which we'll do it now and we'll do it state. No, and it wasn't all this information wasn't meant to be sprung on you this way and no obviously no decisions have been made. Exactly, it's determined. When was this known? Uh, a couple days ago. Let's go. Ready and action. Oh, whatever she says. She says four. Just, you know. Yeah, four. Just compare oh, yeah. What you need. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I figured that was, you know. Yeah, do it that way. Um, and then I'll keep rolling it through. You're just, it's not going to stop. I'm not going to yeah. stop. I'm stop. I'll probably leave you hanging for a little, little bit. But, okay. Um, something like that. So, if you feel any need to feel what the earwig feels like in your ear, I guess. Go ahead. If but not. it's just like a, um, just it's just like for a transistor radio plug? Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of. Uh, what we do is we put a loop of wire around the inside of the car, and this thing is just a little like the same here. I'm gonna go do this. Okay. There's a battery that goes inside of it. it's not in there right yet. And then this fits in your ear kind of like this. Okay? Okay. Basically, as far as it will go in your off camera ear. easier for me to underplay stuff to pull it back and so it was a real challenge to find a way to be to be really truthful and very emotional and huge with, with huge things with big outbursts and, and big gestures and you know um, so it's, it's operatic in a way just there's just big m movements to it so it's not sometimes it's almost you almost feel like it's melodrama rather than drama it's it's but it has to be rooted in some type of type of a very very earnest reality otherwise it doesn't play then you don't care about them. So to try to take this, these big, these operatic emotions and make them, you know, real, is, is uh, this has been, you know, challenging. You should teach it first. You think so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be boring. <laughs>
got the pizza guy back here by the back patio. Can we actually send him around? Yeah. What was the schedule today? You saw it. Um, we basically spent eight hours shooting uh, seven eighths of a page, then shot three two, three and two eighths of a page, three pages and two eighths in two hours. So I guess we're back on schedule again. Do you know what I mean? It's so like, that was my idea. So that's what I would like to find no, that's, something yeah. to do. But, but that's me, what I would, I'm sure I, I, you will, I, I, Phil. I'm sure it'll be a funny bit of business, maybe clicking the pen in the mouth. <laughs> people, people still talk about that. They still talk about that. Three years later. What if I were to um, do mouthwash or something over here? What if I were to brush my teeth? Well, that's what I, th I actually think that's Wait, it. And you were to look into the lens? Fuck, man. I think I should be packing up the you should, shit on the you tables be, or something. You should be doing some kind of small, Calming, small, silly picky. work, you know. Okay. Oh, don't tape this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a study in ham and cheese and how you corral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could light a fire, Phil. Oh, so you cut to me, I'm like, I, I'll I'm like not... dropping shit on the floor. <laughs> oh, you can oh, go believe into me, Phil Parmer's special. Let me show like you exactly how Phil will do it. Death routine. It'll go like this. It'll be like, Some the, thing that you've just, the thing that you've decided to do is that he's going to walk over to the cigar box and you know the little leather case there and he's just gonna go like that with it and here's here's how it'll go when Phil does it. Watch this. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see I'm sorry, Frank. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my Phil Hoffman impersonation. That was pretty good, actually. <laughs> it's got such a heavy uh, branch tied through. Yeah. It's very stiff. That's the other ones are on lighter branches. Let me explain it to you. Yep. Okay. This weight bag drops. When it drops, it actually pulls open a hole in the top of the umbrella. So that hole is simulating a frog going through the top. And when it drops, it'll then become the frog coming down and hitting the breakaway glass table and falling right onto the ground. So this is our uh, frog. Let's run one more like that. Keep the tape rolling. Yeah! <laughs> I do believe that's the one. <laughs> You know, if you could make your movie three hours, 14 minutes, and 55 seconds long, this would work perfectly. Get a new line on the phone. Hey, I can get him to shorten it by five seconds. Please. Please. God, yes. Frank. His name's Frank Mike. Frank Mike. It's on my hand. Oh, right. 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 Give me that. Give me that. 
You didn't screw up at all. He says, yeah. I said, yeah. Oh, you said, fuck, you. fuck do you know? Yeah, but then you got it back. Then you recovered. Uh, what does he say to me after I listen to that? I say, yeah. He said, yeah. What the fuck do you know? And I go, I've seen this before. Other assholes like me. There's no what does he say after I got the cue? He said, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck do you know? And I say, I've seen this before. That's it. That's what yeah, he said. I didn't. I didn't. Asshole like me. Other fucking assholes like me. Yeah. One thing to watch, Jason, is keeping all your arm movements sort of drifting. Not specific in any way. Exactly, not specific in any way. And sometimes you've been kind of throwing your weight into your hand, you know what I mean? And I don't think there's that enough energy okay. within the, the only hand. Time the pain That's good. That yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. But the hand movement Wasted, yeah. should be more okay. so, so softer and, and more right. weighty, you know? That's the only thing. Well, I have been ill for the, so I've been in the hospital for so long, and and I uh, just getting my strength back really. And uh, uh, Paul, he called me up and uh, uh, wanted me to read this, and uh, I, 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 I it was sent to me, and he sent it to me, and he wanted me to to think of this part, and I did, and I read it, and I was very, I was taken aback by it. But what drew me to it, too, is the fact that the guy that I'm playing is dying of cancer at home. And I just went through an experience uh, in which the, the, the life or death thing was, for nine weeks, was unknown, whether I would ever live or not. So, uh, which, fortunately, I remember very little of. You're in a coma like that, you don't know. And I, I lost 46 pounds, or almost 50 pounds. Just dropped every all my body mass, everything. And uh, but this somehow it kept me alive. And uh, and it was sort of prophetic that I would be asked to do a guy going out in life, an older parent, you know, and. Uh, my daughter read it, who's in that film, and she said, you know, isn't it strange that would come along? It's something you, you got, you can't turn down. I mean, you do, no matter. It's it's so fitting. And not that we are estranged. It wasn't that. It was that it was so right for me to do something like that and bring what I know to it. You know, that, that's what she meant. And my wife felt, too, the same. Uh, but it's shocking when you first read it. It's a very on-the-edge, tough script, and I'm sure a movie. I think they shot yesterday 19,000 feet, and he uh, printed 18,000 feet. Oh, so he knows exactly what he wants. <laughs> That's what he tells me. But, um, was, was this the same on the others? No. It seems to be getting worse. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think he's trying to hit, break the million mark. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Whatever that means. That's probably why he wrote such a long script. I'd be interested to know how many films made <laughs> when they break the million mark if they do well. <laughs> this. Titanic probably shot a million. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was the ratio on uh, We shot about eight, seven. So we're shooting about Two and a half times, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> Which is about it's about a dollar twenty a foot. So we're spending about what twenty five thousand a day. Chicken. That's actually what Paul said. He says he says it's the cheapest part about filmmaking. I'm like it's fifty thousand a week, and you shoot for sixteen weeks. That's eight hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I said, that point, it ain't chicken feed. Mm. So have you done a projection to see how far over budget you're going to go? Yeah. What do you got so far? About half a million. I mean, on film. Yeah. Film could be half a million. 
Oh, that's not so bad. Really? Tell you that, Well, it's, it's sort of just about time, exactly. sort of in the nick of time, Jason yeah. Robard just gets to act. Because it's been a lot of like little one line bits. You know what I mean? Yeah. I shouldn't say that because we did his death scene and that. Yeah, I think we met oh, there. shit. Probably. I never remember people when I meet them in this kind of scenario or not. Don't 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 do you know what your next project I tried, is? I practiced one here, and it came out yeah. shitty. Look at it. I was trying to draw a frog in my throat. Oh, which, really? which I have in my sinks. So I wrote it out instead of... Uh, instead of... Uh, uh, what did I draw when I was here? I was up... Ah, <laughs> fucking frog in there. there. I drew one here, but he's terrible. See him? That one's kind of got more of a dragon feel to it. Yeah, it does. It? it looks like a lizard. <laughs> yeah. a horned toad. Horned frog. Remember those horned frogs? They're horned toads in the desert. In the desert? Yeah, they're a lizard. They're, they're called horned toad. Um, they have a horn on them. A little horn. So they had lots of horns on them. They actually have like a... But they do have on the head more than on the rest. Oh. Yeah, they have really have. Uh, I worked with a Mexican beaded lizard. Thank you. With you Becker worked with them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We killed them in it. Goddamn show! <laughs> they had a protest from the other actors. Are you serious? Killing him. <laughs> this son of a bitch was as bit, that big, and he, well, they, they painted him like a Gila monster. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Really, the man. But they're they're all one color. Uh huh. So we put they put a little. They, and then everybody objected to that. The big things on the bulletin board from animal lovers. Right, right, right. <laughs> and if the Mexican beetle lizard bites you. He never lets go, so you have to cut his body off and then go to the doctor and pry the head off, and he just injects tons of venom into you. He had me talking down with this goddamn lizard. He had me talking to him. The lizard went like this. I, I didn't realize he was that poisonous. I had to do a scene with him. Then he blew him up because the guys are supposed to shoot him. Uh, Strother Martin and L.Q. Jones are supposed to shoot the lizard. And, and I'm going to eat him for dinner because I'm starving. I'm out there alone in the oh. desert. I said, well, it's too bad, partner. After I did a thing, I, I picked my knife up. Boom, he explodes. Uh, he had so much charger. He blew this fucking lizard <laughs> movie was into it. a thousand pieces. <laughs> and then he says, Bobby, go get all those pieces again. It didn't come off right. What he always, doesn't he always start his films out that way? Where there's, no. Uh, this was a balance. Which film Peck and Paul film starts out, though, with a, a scorpion? Scorp well, he did that, but yeah. That was a wild bunch. Yeah. Wild bunch, right. But I, uh, this was a uh, uh, cable hook, dollar the cable hook. As he said in the movie, you can't get the cable whether you get the hook. You can't smell. <laughs> Moving towards our eighth consecutive week as champions, that's turning, you know. Gotcha. Uh, we have the kids, Richard, Julian, Stanley. And our new adult challengers today, Mim, Luis, and Todd. Please say hello and welcome to the always ready host of What Do Kids Know? The sign is raising your favorite and my boss, Jimmy Gator. Boom, he comes out downstage. Oh, in the music. And video tapes are speeding. Rolling. And five seconds, four, three. Two. Right, so right. Right. Champions, we have the kids, Richard, All Julia, right. and Stanley. Yep. And our new adult. Let's stop. We'll go from the top again. Uh, these three kids right here, I would not be Start surprised shooting. if it would be quite a while that they're going to be here. But today's a dangerous day because I have just met with the adult challengers backstage. And let me tell you, they pose quite a challenge for our right. So, it's, The fucks are starting to build up now. <laughs> I had this line, um, um, in, in my sleep, when I'm half drunk and going on, and, the, and Ricky Jay is supposed to be, like, saying, are you okay, is everything all right, so, so, he can get through it, and then the original line is, that Paul wrote is, in my sleep, Bert, so as we shoot it, Paul says, no, say in my fucking sleep, Bert. Man. 
I gotta do I gotta do a movie that my kids can watch. As soon as San Diego as you come in, Bert, I gotta talk to you about the movie. And um just I mean not saying anything? You can say anything you want. And so I have. <laughs> and I won't stop. I, I don't I have you know, as it'll be like as you're saying, I'm I need to go. He'll be saying, Why, why is this kind of shit always happen? You'll be on over each other. And as soon as he says that, Jeremy, just blank. Say it right as he's saying his line, so you're both at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so he'll go, I, why is this shit always happen? No, just as soon as she says, this is not the time to go to the bathroom. Why does this kind of shit always happen? Try it one more time. So from Jesus okay. Christ, Stanley. Jesus Christ, Stanley, you can't go to the bathroom now. You have exactly one minute before we're on the air. Now is not the time to go to the bathroom. Like, why does this kind of shit always happen, Stanley? Mm -hmm. Boom, and then you lock. Yeah. Rolling. No, it tracks with her. It's too bad. It was 17 minutes. Huh? Make it just sort of harder. Close your eyes a little bit. Like squint? Yeah, just just down a little bit. No, 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 just close your eyes a little bit. Just like that. Do that. Do that. It's good. It's good. Are you dying? Uh, you know, I'm bummed. We get a groove on, you know, and then we were just right, we were going and what going happened? and going. Well, the kids have to go. Well, who the hell would put their life's work in our kids? I don't fucking get that. You know, no, you're fine, guys. And the more he's sort of like losing it, the more I'm in control. You're going to be okay. Gotcha. Okay. Don't, 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 don't plan it, you guys. Don't, don't, because okay, right. it'll be messy and it'll be great. Okay, fine. Speed? Mark? What's up? Here you go. I just lost my husband in September after 40. One year, well, it'll be 41 years now, but 40 years of marriage. But he wanted to do this play very much. You know, he said, I want to do this play. I mean, I can do it. I can do it. And uh, this is just a year and a half ago like, when we started it. And so every night, you know, I'm like holding my breath. Can I get he, could, he had neuropathy from the chemo. He could hardly feel his feet some night. He couldn't feel his feet on stage. I didn't know if it's going to fall when we did the dance thing and everything. And then there was, it's at the beginning of the second act, he'd be backstage over there on that side. I'm backstage on this side, about to go out on this scene that we have together. And we would do this whole, like, uh, 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 Gene, what's his name? Gene Dance, um, Dancer. Kelly. Uh huh. Gene Kelly. Kelly, yeah. Gene Kelly was Gene because we had the umbrellas. We're going out with umbrellas, you know. And he had his umbrella and I had my umbrella. And we ended up doing a whole routine together. So we had this wonderful time together before he died. And every time I think of it, it was like, because he was always asking me, can't we get married again? Can't we, you know, re our, our vows, you know, uh, restate our vows? And I, I said, no, I, that's like saying it didn't happen in the first place. You know, I don't want to <laughs> restate it. I know I love you, and you know you love me. But this play did, it really did it, you know, better than if we'd gone to church to do it. It was just amazing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when you come in here, Go down to the score. The score gets you up to Philip. It doesn't even matter. Bring it over here. I know where I am. It's not really. We kind of don't care. We're like off-camera lines become floaty things. This is a floater section. It's like. But is there a point where I absolutely have to be right on Stanley at a certain line, or it's gonna be a little late, a little early? We'll we'll always end up there at the end. I promise. I promise. Or right, let's shoot. How many takes do you think I'll do? <laughs> hey. 25. 25 is right. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks. What will the final running time of this motion picture be? Three hours. Five hours. One at a time, one at a time. Three, yeah, three, three, three hours, 25. 325. Three ten. <laughs> Very nice. Eighty-eight minutes for the prologue. <laughs> the, <laughs> that's right. The correct answer is three hours and fifty minutes. Fifteen minutes, including credits.
How much money will it make? A dollar. I really don't know. But you can't say. I don't know what I can. Yes, you do. But you can't say. But I, you won't say. I don't know. What? No, I, I don't. I don't know what I've done. Yes, you do. Rose, if I told you that I knew, would you stay? No. But I don't know what I've done. You should know better. What can I say? What do you want to say? Fucking. Yeah. I'm the only person. It's fun. Yeah. It doesn't get to say. It. Yeah. The kids get to say it. Fucking know better. Would it be easier if it was well then? Well then you should know better. <laughs> I mean, fucking is fine too, but. Um, Got to be fucking no better. No Good, better. do it. Do it. Try it. Fucking no better. No, I don't <laughs> think I can say it. Yeah, no, what if you, what, I, I don't, what if you just said no better? <laughs> Too late. Too late. No better. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. No better. That's fucking great. I Get it. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The one thing to set for here, because this is um, is, is is just making just so Jeff can really get it on the dolly move, is um, is when you exactly when you stand up. Yes, it's uh, so make it. Yes, you do. Say it. Yes, you do. Stand up. Okay. Yeah, well, so it's yes, do it, you do. I'm gonna do it more and in this slow motion anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes, you do. So, John, I've written you something. Um, Adam, let's just. Yeah, I'm okay. slowly picking people up. I've written you something that, like, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's the total. It's the verbalization of what's going on. Do you want to just, just sort of say this out loud in a sort of tone, you know, hushed sort of tone? I just wanted to come here, to come here to say something, something important, something that you said. You said we should say things and do things and not let, not lie or keep it back or these sorts of things, these sorts of things that eat people up. I'm going to do that. Isn't that what you said, Gloria? I can't let it go. I can't let you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 
Oh, the Hudson sprayer, JC? Thank the you. windshield? Thank you. How you doing, Robert? You ready for a spritz? And roll camera on the turn. And frog. Frog. <laughs> frog. Ooh, yeah. Still rolling. Still rolling. Cool. Can I see that again? Yeah, of course. Um, okay, let's just do one more of these then. Am I going to make it? To the end of the show or the end of the night? To the end of the night. Or as a career? The end of the bright spot, the end of the kids, the end of this fucking motherfucking sequence. This is when I want, when I want you to start saying, Yes, Robert. Let's get his money and go. You know, that whole section. Start saying it right when you're right here. Cut. 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 We should redo both, both of the boys. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the two shots are fine. Two shots are fine. I'm sorry. 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 So it's a recreation of what we did yesterday, everybody. I really screwed up yesterday and missed so a missed we'll, a little beat. We'll so we gotta get it again. Let's pull that down. Okay. Dad, Dad, what the heck is going on? Yeah, say it again, Dad. Did you get his money, Dad? Be quiet. We gotta get his money. Go. Stay did you quiet. Get his money? No. Come on, Dad. Be quiet get and be money. quiet no. now. Just you... give me your money. Hey. Filming forever, Mark. Hmm? Don't you think we've been filming forever? You tell me. You're the boss. <laughs> yes, we've been filming forever. 60, 60 days is, I think, the maximum. Okay, just give a count. Three, two, one. Okay, we got lucky. It still works. That's none of your business. I need corrective oral surgery. I need the braces now. That's none of your business. That's none of your business. Give me a second. Fine. That's none of your business. I've been a good worker, a, a good and loyal worker for you, you fucking asshole. What's going on? Oh, I fell. Oh. 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 I've been slimed. Oh, brother. Hmm? Don't worry what about happened? It. Oh, man. You, you okay? Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I gotta find a phone. <laughs> Stay one. here. Okay. Don't move. Okay. <laughs> Great. Robert, we got <laughs> John, you all right? Where's John? John C, come back. He went for a phone. Uh, How many confirmed hits on this platform? Somebody one, maybe two. Uh, I know two people for sure who went to bed Friday night, and 
around, you know, 11.30 normal times, and woke, said, oh, I'm going to sleep till like, late afternoon tomorrow. It's going to be great, because I don't have to do anything on Saturday. I woke up at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 in the morning. Went, How is that possible? I wanted to get some sleep. It was 8.30 Sunday morning. Completely lost all of Saturday. I'll do one more. That was good. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna go for it. I can get it. I know I can. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Oh, sucker. Fuck it. <laughs> I have my fucking key. Take him. One more. <laughs> good. That was good. Here. Can I ask you what, what you thought of the script when you first read it? Uh -huh. I thought it was I thought it was astounding and I went to Paul and they said it's great it's great it's a little long he goes you fucking cocksucker I'm not gonna cut one goddamn word of this thing everyone says I'm only gonna cut one mother so then I talked to Julianne Moore I said what'd you think of the script she says it's amazing it's a little long I said did you tell Paul that she said yeah and I said what did he say she said he said you fucking cocksucker I'm not gonna cut one goddamn word It's an amazing, it's an amazing journey. We'll see. <laughs> I, I can't wait to take it, you know what I mean? It's, it's one thing to read it on the page. It'll, it'll be astounding to see it all together. It's not an hour before charcoal, it's about charcoal. 15 minutes away from charcoal. 15 minutes from charcoal. 209? Mark Rantz, yes, you know, no one Chocolate cares Chocolate. about this fucking movie anymore, okay? There's more important things. Chocolate. There's life and love. And no, Charcoal Slater, but... <gasps> Charcoal Okay, thanks, Liam. Bye. Um, no, I mean, so no, Boogie Nights was uh, Boogie Nights was actually still a pretty sort of small film, kind of. I think we still all still had the mentality of uh, of Sydney, a little bit. You know, we went into it saying, "Oh, we're making a sort of low budget film, but it happens to be a big film." So yeah, the story had a lot of scope. Right, but I think we still, I think everyone, I remember when we were hiring, we only hired people who kind of had sort of the sensibilities of being able to do sort of more independent, lower budget stuff. This film, I think we've gone, this one we just, we spent a lot of money, a lot of money. But it's a big story, I guess, you know, it's, I mean, we're spending $10 million in effects, so. What's I think your I'm feeling about Magnolia at the moment? Um, I'm happy it's ending. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Let me just look at this wall here. Bear look. January, February, March, April, May, and now fucking June. It's uh, it's gone on quite a long time. Because remember, we got we prepped this also. So we prepped it back in uh, August, September, September. Yeah, September. I was on the no. I was on this before that. We were doing a budget last last June. So by now, it's kind of like you know what. It's a long time. It's actually, I think a lot of people are ready for it to finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some pretty wild stuff. I mean, I could ask you this question. I mean, just imagine that, I mean, the bit when we shot Tom Cruise feels like another movie. That was back in January. And we did the kids show. That felt like another movie. And we did Claudia's apartment and the whole lamp lighter. It's funny. You know what it is? It's, just, it's, it's, it's uh, definitely the biggest thing I've ever done. 
And, uh, <laughs> yes. You know, you're not alone. Everybody, that's how everybody describes the movie, as making, like, five different little movies. But it is. Somehow they're going to end up together. Well, you know, especially since we got the actors to work, like, in three to four week clumps. So actually what happened is you would shoot their story, and then they'd go, and then you'd go to the next, which, which actually, for Paul, is kind of good. Because I think he got to have continuity with the actors. But it's, uh, I imagine most people also must be happy it's over, nearly ended, or at least from a production point of view. I mean, Joanne and uh, Dylan and Paul, they've got to edit the thing, which you can imagine if it took us 90 odd days to shoot it, it's going to take, I don't know how many days to edit it. Um, exactly. It's funny because when Paul, I remember when he first told us about this project, he kept saying it's this small little film he has called Magnolia, and we were like, oh great, something small would be nice. It actually turned into the biggest thing. It's like every page had like something complicated, visual effects, stunts, rain, locations. I mean, it was pretty, um, it's not your run of the mill movie. Stuff. We need to just get it down to rhythm and bum, mm -hmm. bum, exactly. bum, bum, bum. Right. Because you've got ex there's extra voicings going on right. in it Upper sounds strings. like you dun, bum, bum. You're doing a thing that's going from the second to the third beat. Okay. You should try and thin that out. Okay. So bum, bum, So maybe just one. So the G B off. flat G is still important in terms of the melody. G to B flat, G to G.
Kansas City. Um, we uh, we do uh, entertainment reports on the weekend news, just little stories about uh, new movies coming out or whatever. And so we like to kind of preview the new releases. Okay, we're gonna start in a single shot, please. Then go to a two shot. When I say hola, we're starting a two shot, zooming to a single, varying the shots. Okay. We're rolling. Okay, I'm coming. Tres dos uno. Siempre quiso hacer cine, aunque nunca asistió a clase. Lo único que necesitó fue ver largometrajes. Su primera película fue Heart Eight. Luego le siguió la aclamada Boogie Nights. Ahora Paul Thomas Anderson dirige por tercera vez otra interesante película, Magnolia. Hola, Paul. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Go nuts there, dude. Go nuts. Well, I gotta ask one more goddamn question about Paul Thomas Anderson. How great am I? I'm gonna kill somebody. How great am I? How great am I? How's that? How's that with Paul? How great am I? How great am I? How great am I? What did you order for lunch? I'm like, I work with him because he's dumb. That's what I said. Did you do the poster? Yeah. It's a great poster. Thank you. The flower poster. Yeah. I did the poster. I did the trailer. I did everything. You did the poster. It was you conceived it and someone drew it for you? Exactly. I had to fight for it, too. Mm -hmm. So is Cruz in the poster now? Yeah, he's there. Okay. He's he's there a little bit, and then, like, second week, wide release, we'll, like, bring him out more, put him in a different spot, so highlight him a little bit more. This is going to make fun of Phil. You know, he developed the film, too. Yeah. He sent it to a lab. He just didn't like the work they were doing, so he set up a lab in his bathroom, and he d developed the film. It has that kind of look to it. He ground the lenses that we used in this film.
Magnolia the movie is one of the top three motion pictures of the year. All is voted today by the National Board of Review. Congratulations. I feel so detached from it. Don't you feel detached from it? I do. I feel very detached from it tonight. I mean, it's not, it's totally it's not. Like something that you knew so intimately yeah. and it became completely an object. Yeah, totally. People talking about it to you and you're going, right. Oh, right. Oh. I mean, I feel so far away from it right now. Oh, God. Like it's the fucking girlfriend at Dupar's restaurant, Big Red. Yes, yeah, so finish that Fox? sentence. Something you know, like the girlfriend that what? You know, he's just not there for you. Action. <laughs> you two. You're embarrassing all of us. Look at you. Boogie Nights made money. Boogie Nights made money. You want to be the only one to keep it up? Do it again. You're embarrassing us. Go. Stop, 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 stop it. Just stop for a second. What did I tell you? It's too fucking long, okay? There's too many blow-ups. It's all just too fucking too. Smart enough. Yeah. Boogie Nights wasn't like this. Sydney's not like this. Huh? You want to come back home and be embarrassed in front of them? You're the only child that's too long. Smart enough. Do it again. Good. Good. What kind of ending was that? <laughs> Tell me something. People don't care about her smiling. Do it again. No, I'm gonna fake. Do it again. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Just run away! That's great! That's great! Just hide in the closet with all your lace and your frog. No, get up. No one cares anymore. Stop it. Stop. No one cares. You're done. That's it. Well, we thought it was a grown-up. But clearly it's not ready to go into the world yet. You're not ready. You're not ready. And when people say that you're too long, you're too long. Okay? Do your friends tell you that the Jason Robards monologue is not too long? They're lying. They're lying to you. They're trying to make you feel better. You're working out your psychoses at everyone else's 850. No one cares. Why couldn't you? No, no, no. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. We still love you. You're no boogie nights. Yeah. <laughs> The Golden Berlin Bear to the film Magnolia von Paul Thomas Anderson.
I, I, I just would want to say thank you to the jury. Um, thanks a lot for liking this movie because uh, it helps and it's very encouraging when you get prizes, when you really, it's just it's very encouraging to keep working hard. And um, um, thank you to my cast and to this amazing city, which is a great place to show a movie and especially in this, this building. It's an amazing place to watch your own movie. <laughs> um, so, and thank you to Moritz, the director of the festival. And I'm on the stage with some really talented people, and this is just wonderful. Thank you so much for giving me this. Thank you very much.